Is it on now? Okay. You guys can all see. You're really lucky that my phone wasn't on and like while we were back there whispering because you all won't see that. Um, so obviously today, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Maddie. Um, today I'm going to be speaking on heaven. Um, but first I'm going to tell you a little story about myself. So I am a senior at Central Valley High School. Go Rams. Um, love it. Um, but I didn't always go to CD. Um, I grew up in this really small town called Millersburg. I don't know if you guys heard of it or not. Most likely not. I mean, it's kind of tiny. But when I say small town, I mean like, I was only going to graduate with about 46 kids. Um, so definitely smaller than most of the schools around here. And I just loved it so much. We all knew each other. Um, we were all pretty much friends. And it was just really great. Um, we had classes together. Like there was never a time where I would walk into a class or a new school year and like not know anyone. There was always someone to talk to. Everyone knew everything about everyone. Um, could be both good and bad, whatever you want. Um, but we all knew each other. So then my parents decided that we were going to move to Harrisburg. Um, that's how I got here. And I was so excited. Um, they said we we're gonna go to Central Dolphin and you look at Central Dolphin on the website, it looks pretty spectacular. Way bigger than my other school. My other school you could play like, I don't know, basketball and soccer. Those were like the two sports. Here they had like a golf team, like ping pong, they even had a bowling team. Like I was so excited for all these new experiences. I got to meet so many new friends. Um, so I was super excited. Um, the first day of school, the guidance counselor was showing me all around and I just remember that this school was ginormous. Like it took me a solid two weeks um, to find a first period class without anyone showing me. Once I got to first period, I was good because on my hand I had written down like how many left, rights, up and down the stairs I needed to go to get to all my other classes. But like I have this engraved in my head, okay? So it was first period, I had science class. I'd walk into the room and then I had to make a left and then I'd walk down the hall and I'd make another left and then I'd walk down until I saw the hallway on my right. I'd take that hallway and it was the last room on the left. It was history class with Mr. Hetrick and that was an interesting class, but that is for another time. Um, so I was excited, but I quickly realized that finding my way around school was not going to be my biggest problem. So for me, my biggest problem was definitely going to be making friends. Um, now, like I said, I came from a school where I knew absolutely everyone. And I walked into this huge school where it seemed like everyone already had their friends. Um, they've been going to school with each other since kindergarten. I didn't start on the first day of school, so everyone had already met the people in their classes, and I was just a new face. I would walk into school every day not knowing if I was going to speak to anyone that day, and I would absolutely dread lunch. Like, I just didn't know if I was going to sit there and look like a loner, or if I was going to sit with people but yet still not talk to them. Um, have any of you guys ever moved before? Like, okay, so some of you maybe know what that's like, Maybe you're like way too cool for that. Um, you made friends right away. I don't really know, but that was my story, and I I felt so lonely, um, unloved, and just like I wasn't worthy of friends. I was so exhausted of trying to be someone. I wasn't just so people might like me and want to be my friend. But I would come home from school every single day, go down to my room, and just. I would like plead to God if he would just send me one person. Like I moved to this huge school and I didn't understand why people, like even just one person, God couldn't send one person to be my friend. So I struggled with that for a really long time. Um, fortunately, I did grow up in a Christian home, so I did know Jesus and I did have a Bible. And my Bible at the time, um, I was going through it, and in the back, it had what they called like the subject index. Um, and it was these bold words, and then underneath was like page numbers and Bible verses. 
Um, turns out the bold words are all different types of topics like joy, jealousy, love, stuff like that. And then underneath were all different Bible verses that pertain to that. Um, I don't know, have any of you guys ever like opened the Bible and be like, okay, God, speak to me. Like, whatever page I open up to, they, they, I know you speak to me. And I was like, David killed someone. <laughs> okay, great. That's my song. Um, yeah, so it doesn't always work like that, but in the back of the Bible, that subject index is kind of like that like magic, God speak to me type thing. Um, but if you look um, in the back of the Bibles on your chairs, it's not there, like I already checked. But if you guys need a Bible, um, Ryan and Allie have ones for you. And in the back, they, it does have those. So if you want a Bible that has that when you need one, just ask Ryan and Allie and they'll get that to you. Um, but I was reading my Bible one day after school and I came across Revelation 21, verse 1 through 4. So if you guys want to grab the Bibles under your chairs and flip to that, I think it's on page 961 if I am recalling that correctly. But if you've never read Revelations, it's like insane, okay? It's the last book of the Bible, and it's like, if you read this, you think it's completely fake. You would have no idea what's happening. There's like dragons, fire, like death, and all that fun stuff. But um, chapter 21 is a verse all about heaven. Um, so I'll let you guys flip to that. It's going to be Revelations 21, verse one through four. And it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. They will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Now, this verse absolutely hit home with me. Because, like I said, the weeks prior to finding this verse, pain, sorrow, suffering, like, was my life. Um, I felt so lonely, but this verse was just a reminder to me that one day, one day God will sit beside me and he will wipe every tear from my eyes. He, there will be no more pain, no more suffering or crying or anything, and it will just be perfect. So this verse, this verse gave me a hope, um, and I realized that heaven is my hope. And I pray that heaven is your hope as well, because you don't really need me to stand up here and tell you how broken this world is and how painful this world can be, because we all have something. And I don't know what that may be for you today. Maybe it's the death of a loved one, or maybe it's your parents' divorce, or even your anxiety and depression. Like, whatever that may be for you, everyone has something. And putting your hope in heaven, it's its not like an earthly hope. Like, when we think of hope on, in earth, we like, oh, I really hope I get 100 on this test, or I hope my parents give me a puppy for my birthday, or something like that. Hope, like an earthly hope, we think of something that might happen, something that could possibly happen. But a spiritual hope, a hope in heaven, is something that will happen. It's more so something to look forward to and place our focus on than something that could potentially happen. So right now, I just, I really want to give you the full effect of kind of what heaven can be like. Um, so if you just want to close your eyes really quick, and I just want you to imagine the most beautiful thing you have ever seen. Um, some kind of scenery, whatever that might be for you. Uh, maybe it's the map like standing in the mountains hearing the locust chirp, or maybe it's laying on the grass staring up at the galaxy, or maybe it's even standing with your toes in the sand as the water hits your feet, and you're just watching the dolphins drum, and you hear the wind blowing in the trees. Just imagine a beautiful, beautiful place. 
Okay, you can open your eyes now, but I, I really want you to think, like, God gave us just such beautiful masterpieces, artworks, and, like, sceneries in this broken world, a world where plastic is spilling our oceans and people kill and destroy, a world where pain and suffering cloud our vision. God gave us that amazing, amazing, just views for a broken world. Now, I, if we look at Revelations 21 again, it's going to be verses 18 through 23. So, in this, there, the writer is talking about heaven. Um, he saw this vision, and this is what he said he saw. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a gate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh crystallite, the eighth pearl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh chaselin, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were made of pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great streets of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and the Lamb is its Lamb. So, I don't know about you, but I don't know all the stones. Um, I know, like, Amethyst is my birthstone, so... Uh, I think some of them are also birthstones, but that's not really important. The important part is that every the wall was made of all these precious stones, and the gates made of pearls. Like I don't know if you guys have ever looked at the price of pearls. Um, I tried to buy like a pearl bracelet thing once, and my bank account was like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. Um, yeah, it they're pretty expensive. Uh, but we place these values on these stones and these gems and all of this, but like, there is cities made in heaven made of this stuff. Like, God is not holding back in heaven. He's holding back on earth, and we think what we see on earth is so amazing. Just wait until we get to heaven, because our minds will not be able to comprehend the perfection that awaits us there. It will be perfect the most beautiful thing we've ever laid our eyes on. There will be no more pain, no more suffering. Like, we will be in perfection. But see, there's also a hard truth that comes with that. Not everyone goes to heaven. You have a choice uh, whether or not you're going to spend eternity with Jesus. Now, God and Jesus, they are longing for you. They are knocking at your heart and they want you to turn to him. Um, Jesus is, is asking you to just look his way. He already chose you, just as you are. He died on the cross for your sins, but now it's your turn to choose him. It's your turn to turn to him and accept him. And I know that it won't always be an easy thing to live for God. Um, and I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be straight up honest, it's not going to take your pain away. But there will be someone walking alongside of you with every single heartache, every single thing you have to walk through in this earth. Jesus will be with you if you accept him as your Savior. And maybe you've already accepted him as your Savior. Maybe you just are still living for the world. I know um, when I first started following Jesus, I kind of thought like, oh, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I'm going to do whatever heck I want. I'm going to go to heaven. Great. Okay, see you later. That was what I thought that I could do. But it turns out that we can't live like that. Um, when we accept Jesus, we also accept the fact that we have to die to ourselves and we have to try and be like Jesus. And we're going to mess up. It's not going to be perfect. Everyone sins. Everyone makes mistakes. But we have to at least try. And I know, like, we read the Bible and it's like, do not curse, do not drink, do not do all these things that, like, seem fun and that the world glorifies. But it, it just seems like a thing of rules, but I promise you that it's not. I can tell you firsthand um, that 
following Jesus is just saving us from so much heartache and so much pain and suffering that comes with the world's ways. So I just ask you right now, just be different. Um, say no to the world, say no to your fleshly desires, and just follow Jesus to the best of your abilities. You're going to make mistakes, and that's okay. That's why Jesus died on the cross, but he still is longing for you, and he still wants your heart. Now, I just invite you right now to just close your eyes for a second and just bow your heads. I invite you that if maybe you're choosing to accept Jesus as your Savior today and put your hope in heaven, um, I maybe you're just rededicating your life to him or maybe just repenting from your sins, but whatever it is, and maybe you might not even be ready to say this prayer, and that's okay too, but just just tell Jesus that you accept him if you're ready. Just say, Jesus, I accept you, and you are the way, the truth, and the life. Dear Lord, you know the hearts of every person here. You know their hopes, their dreams, their desires. Lord, I pray that no matter what comes their way, they will keep their eyes fixed on you. I pray that they would place their hope not in this temporary, painful world, but in your perfect, everlasting heaven. Lord, I know that you will be there guiding their steps, but I just pray that they would be able to feel your presence, Lord. This world comes with so many challenges, and I just pray that each and every person here would lean on you when times of trouble come, and even in times of happiness, Lord, I just pray that we would lean on you, because with you, we can do anything. And I pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. So that's all for today, guys. I hope that if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, um, you just that's just so amazing. Um, congratulations. And if you have questions, maybe you didn't accept Jesus, that's okay. Um, you can talk to your life group leaders if you want, um, maybe even you know, Ryan and Allie. Um, like I said, if you do need a Bible, ask Ryan and Allie. They can get that for you. But have fun in life groups and have a great week.